Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The House of the Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Author Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote the Gothic book, The House of the Seven Gables, which was released in 1851. It was inspired by Hawthorne's knowledge of the Salem witch trials of 1692 and by a gabled house in Salem, Massachusetts that belonged to his cousin, Susanna Ingersoll. Successful in its first year, it outsold Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter by more than 6,000 copies. There have been numerous film adaptations, short pieces, television shows, and additional novels based on the novel since it was first published. H.P. Lovecraft drew inspiration from it for his horror writings. When their patriarch falsely accused a man of witchcraft during the Salem witch trials, the Pynchon family was cursed. Hepzibah, the current Pynchon, has fallen on hard times and is forced to live in the house with a lodger and manage a small shop. Phoebe, a distant relative, shows up one day and insists on remaining for the duration of her stay. The fact that her brother, Clifford, is set to arrive soon makes Hepzibah hesitant at first. Despite this, Phoebe immediately lights up the shop and proves to be an excellent asset. When Clifford reappears, he reveals that he had been incarcerated for quite some time. Phoebe begins to take care of him because he is suffering from mental illness. Judge Pynchon, the violent cousin of one of the siblings, comes over frequently and insists on speaking with Clifford. Hepzibah is seeking for her brother when she discovers that the judge has been killed while Phoebe is out of the house. Having fled the scene, Hepzibah and Clifford return a short time later to report that the judge had died of a heart attack and had falsely accused Clifford of the murder of his uncle. The family moves into Clifford's house after he receives the judge's riches. Farmer Matthew Mall erected a cottage near a peaceful spring in the middle of the 17th century in a little Massachusetts hamlet. A landowner named Colonel Pynchon became interested in Mall's property as the town expanded and grew. He took advantage of the excitement surrounding the witch hunts to accuse Mall of practicing witchcraft. Pynchon is warned by Mall as he dies that God will provide him with blood to drink. The land that was formerly owned by Mall is now home to Pynchon, who defies the curse and constructs a house with seven precisely peaked gables. A huge elm tree may be found outside the house. Celebrations are held in the house on its official opening day. Pynchon, on the other hand, is gone, and when the attendees of the feast smash down his bedroom door, they discover him dead at his desk. Many people in town believe they observed a strange figure departing the scene, and suspicions of foul play are rampant. However, the narrator dismisses these rumors. Pynchon's son inherits the house and his children and his children's descendants will live there for the next 125 years. In spite of this, Pynchon's successors have been denied one of his most valuable assets, a big plot of land in Maine. Another Pynchon family member is killed by one of his nephews in the house a few years later. The nephew is found guilty and sentenced to prison. It is Judge Pynchon, the dead man's other nephew, who constructs a big house outside of the city. Even though her brother is behind bars, the jailed man's sister is still stuck in the Seven Gabled Mansion. Maul's descendants, on the other hand, have had a more difficult time tracing their roots. As a result, many of them no longer know who Maul was or how he came to be. Many of them, on the other hand, are said to have inherited some sort of supernatural ability from him. One morning, Hepzibah Pynchon, the house's solitary occupant, wakes up and looks in the mirror at her aging face, sighing. We are assured that Hepzibah's boyfriend is not the young man in the portrait that we see Hepzibah sobbing over every day. A modest business has been reopened within Hepzibah's house by one of her relatives, who had previously run it years ago. Among the items she hawks in her shop are toys and snacks. Running the shop, on the other hand, offends Hepzibah's aristocratic sensibilities because she was once a wealthy woman. The shop's first customer that morning is Holgrave, the house's sole lodger and a young photographer. Hepzibah's mood is brightened by Holgrave's efforts to cheer her up. They are startled to see Hepzibah open a shop in the area, as two employees enter the store. A worker relates how his wife wasted money in a shop before they depart, and the conversation turns to better quality shops being discovered on nearly every corner. As a result, Hepzibah is most concerned with the manner in which the workmen discussed her fall from grace and how casually it was discussed. It's time for a gingerbread man for the next customer. Hepzibah feels sorry for the boy and decides to throw out her stale baked regardless. She doesn't charge him for the cookie. Hepzibah, on the other hand, soon returns to receive the boy's money for another cookie. The affluent judge Jaffrey Pynchon, a distant relative of Hepzibah, passes by the shop window and gives her a nod before going on. Uncle Venere, a wacky old man in the community, comes into the business and supports Hepzibah. 
This will only be for a short period of time, and her fortunes will improve again shortly, he assured her. He refers to an unidentified man and inquires as to when this man will return. He goes on to say that this individual has been the subject of much discussion among the villagers. His customers are unable to help Hepzibah concentrate after this talk. A young girl arrives on a bus at the end of the day and knocks on the door. When Hepzibah first sees her, she thinks of her as Phoebe, a long-lost aunt who has come to pay a visit despite never receiving a letter she sent in advance. Because Clifford might be disturbed by her presence, Hepzibah allows her to enter, but just for one night. Phoebe, on the other hand, starts redecorating her room the following morning. Because the master of the house will be returning shortly, Hepzibah tells her that she can't stay any longer. If she meant Judge Pynchon, Hepzibah becomes enraged and assures Phoebe that the judge never steps foot inside the house. Clifford, Hepzibah's brother, is the one in charge of running the household. She gives Phoebe a picture of the man she had been admiring earlier in the day. Hepzibah allows Phoebe to stay in the house for a few weeks as long as she helps with the housework and runs the business. Phoebe is joyful as ever. She rapidly demonstrates her ability to operate the shop and by the end of the first day has sold most of the goods and is planning to rebuild the store. When Hepzibah begins to adore Phoebe, she laments the fact that she hails from a humble home and will never be able to achieve the status of lady. They notice that Phoebe's cheerfulness and attractiveness transcend these class disparities, even though she comes from a poorer side of the family. Hepzibah shows Phoebe around the estate at the end of the day and tells her the story of the fabled riches buried someplace on the property. A ghost named Alice Pynchon, who lived in the house with her great-great-aunt, also makes an appearance, as does her own great-great-aunt. It is now Phoebe's responsibility to tend to her garden and feed the chickens. Her encounter with Holgrave happens as she is in the middle of this. Phoebe is first wary of speaking to Holgrave due to Hepzibah's warning that he was a bit of a revolutionary, but as she gets to know him better, she begins to relax her guard. The two discuss Holgrave's daguerreotypes, and Phoebe expresses her disliking of the images because they make individuals appear stiff. A painting can never convey the depth of feeling that Holgrave's portraits can convey to his subjects. Upon seeing his portrait, Phoebe assumes it is of her grandfather, Colonel Pynchon. Holgrave enlists Phoebe's help in caring for the hens and flowers because he knows she's better at it than he is. When Phoebe arrives home, she discovers Hepzibah alone in the living room, talking to herself in a low voice. Sitting next to her, Phoebe has the strangest sensation that there is someone else in the room. She believes she can make out a low murmur in the room, one that is nearly human in nature. Hepzibah is cooking in the kitchen the next morning when Phoebe wakes up. When she sees Hepzibah in a state of nearly frenzied euphoria, she can't help but be awestruck by her emotional state. Hepzibah informs Phoebe that Clifford will be home soon and that she must remain cheerful no matter what happens. Clifford appears to be out of sorts when he arrives. Confusion engulfs him as he traverses the rooms and speaks in the third person about himself. Even though he seems to appreciate Phoebe, he has trouble picturing her as a member of the household. Clifford is unable to look his sister in the eyes at breakfast and frantically scans the room. After the meal, Clifford is terrified to see the portrait of Colonel Pynchon. Hepzibah refuses to comply with his request to have it removed. She admits that she can't, but offers to cover it with a handkerchief so that he won't know. When Clifford comes upon the shop, Hepzibah is forced to explain to him why she opened it due to her financial situation. He begins crying as he tells her he doesn't care because they can't be embarrassed anymore. Hepzibah weeps as she watches him fall asleep on his chair. Phoebe encounters Judge Pynchon in the shop that day. Phoebe initially finds him attractive, but when he tries to kiss her as a greeting, she reflexively backs away. Phoebe thinks she has seen a glimpse of the judge's true personality when the judge's smile disappears for a split second. In the daguerreotype Polgrave had shown her, Phoebe saw the same man. He looks like the old Colonel Pynchon, and Phoebe can't believe it. It's not just that these two individuals look alike says the narrator, they also have similar avarice and the same ability to mask their brutal natures behind a genial facade. While observing the judge, Phoebe is haunted by Matthew Mall's curse on the colonel, which stated that God would provide him with blood to drink. In light of Clifford's return, the judge indicates that Phoebe may be afraid of him, to which Phoebe vehemently denies. It's best if she doesn't know what Clifford's done wrong in the past, he says, but he doesn't elaborate. Hepzibah shows up and blocks the judge's entry into the house. Hepzibah denies the judge's offer of financial support for her family, glaring at him with hatred. While Hepzibah is in the kitchen, Clifford begs Hepzibah to get rid of the judge, but when the judge hears Clifford, he tries even harder. Hepzibah is able to repel him, and the judge regains his composure and genial demeanor. 
he expresses his desire to return at a later time, when the siblings will be more cooperative. Hepzibah is fatigued and asks Phoebe to occupy Clifford after he has gone. Phoebe guesses that the judge and the siblings have a long-standing feud. She recognizes that Phoebe's youthful presence is more reassuring to Clifford than her own, and asks the young woman to take care of her brother during the next weeks. His disappearance no longer fascinates Phoebe, instead, her presence brightens up the house. He's pity-stricken, and she doesn't care what happened to him before that. In the garden, Clifford spends more time tending to a patch of beans whole grave planted after discovering the seeds in a box hidden away by some long-deceased Pynchon ancestor. Starting today, Hepzibah will begin planning Sunday lunches for her family and friends. She enjoys the luncheon since Clifford gets a little riled up during them. On one occasion, Clifford tells Better that he has grander plans in store for him. When asked if he wants to be a part of any scams or have any property, Better gently declines. He then goes on to say that he desires happiness and has been waiting for it for quite some time. The narrator reminds us that unless the unfortunate man can find happiness now, fate has no plans for him. Clifford asks Hepzibah if they can attend to church with him one Sunday as the town prepares for the service. The moment they put on their clothes and prepare to go, they discover that they are unable to leave through the front door. Unhappy Clifford tells Hepzibah they've turned into ghosts and are now entangled in the mansion. Holgrave and Phoebe form a friendship as Phoebe enjoys the place but craves company of her own age. Holgrave begins to discuss his revolutionary views with Phoebe. According to him, the ideas of the preceding generation should be ignored and new ones should be invented by each successive generation. Phoebe isn't thrilled about this, but she's willing to hear it out. Phoebe informs Holgrave that she can't give him anything he doesn't already know about Clifford's past or mental state. Holgrave then tells Phoebe that he feels the pension curse may possibly be the pension madness. Then he asks whether she'd be interested in reading his magazine article on the subject. He reads it to her and she accepts. In the book, the whole text of the narrative is available. Colonel Pynchon's grandson found Matthew Mall's grandson and invited him to the home of Seven Gables for a meeting years ago. The poor carpenter who was Mall's grandson barged into the home and demanded to speak with Pynchon in person. As far as Mall's grandson knew, the curse would only be lifted if the house was returned to his family. The colonel's grandson, Gervais Pynchon, on the other hand, is unwilling to discuss the curse. Because he wants to know where his grandfather's vast main property was, he believes the Mall family may know where the deed is. When Matthew Mall's son began renovating on the house, the deed inexplicably vanished from the property. In exchange for the Seven Gabled Mansion, the present Matthew Mall, the original Matthew's grandson, agrees to help Gervais locate the missing money, but he declines Gervais's offer of payment. In order to contact his father's ghost, Maul instructs him to utilize Alice Pynchon, Gervais's little daughter, as a medium. Using hypnosis, he lulls her into a state of trance. Alice has a vision of Colonel Pynchon and the elder Maul. She sees the colonel choked to death by the Mauls, who had prevented him from informing her where the deeds were committed. Because of his power over Alice, the present Maul informs Gervais that the deed will not be revealed until it no longer has any value. Maul plays with the girl for the next few years, abusing his position of authority over her. To the point where he may call for her from anywhere and she will hear him, he has complete power over her. He has the power to manipulate her emotions in whatever way he wants. In the middle of the night, Maul gets married and asks Alice to be his maid of honor. Alice, on the other hand, is unprepared for the frigid weather and succumbs to pneumonia shortly thereafter. Matthew Mall regrets that he killed the girl in order to irritate her father, and he feels terrible about it. Upon finishing the story to Phoebe, Holgrave discovers that his detailed portrayal of Alice's hypnosis has also sent Phoebe into a state of unconsciousness. His mind briefly wonders to how he can take advantage of the circumstance, but he quickly dismisses it in favor of reawakening his partner. Phoebe explains to Holgrave that she must return to her own place for a while, but she also expresses her sadness at doing so. Holgrave informs her that she's starting the second phase of her youth and that she'll appreciate life more now that she's out of the teen years. As for Hepzibah and Clifford, he feels they are already dead and cannot be resurrected. As a result, Phoebe is astonished and a little offended. Mr. Pynchon has secrets that not even Holgrave knows about, and Holgrave begs for her forgiveness and warns her to be wary of Judge Pynchon. Phoebe will be departing on her vacation in no time. Because of the suffocating conditions in the house, Hepzibah notices that Phoebe's mood has deteriorated. The house returns to its gloomy state after Phoebe has left. Hepzibah answers to the judge in the same way she did to Clifford the last time, by excluding him from the house. 
He grows enraged and the narrator implies the reason why the judge has become like a corpse tucked up in the nook of the great house is because the judge is hiding something too horrible. Prior to Clifford being taken away and detained, he told the judge that he knew the location of papers which showed the location of a significant amount of their uncle Jaffrey's legacy, the judge tells Hepzibah. Despite Hepzibah's denials, the judge insists that she bring her brother to the man's location so that he can talk with him. When Clifford refuses to reveal the whereabouts of the documents, the judge reaches the end of his rope and threatens to put him in an asylum. When Hepzibah is overcome with apprehension, she goes upstairs to find Clifford. Hepzibah slowly makes her way up the stairwell to Clifford's chamber, pausing to look out a window in order to buy herself some extra time to devise a plan to keep the judge away from Clifford. Upon arriving at Clifford's chamber, she finds it deserted and panics as she rushes back to the basement. While seated on a chair in the parlor, she comes across the judge and approaches him, hoping he may assist her. The judge appears to be frozen in place. It's at this point when Clifford storms in to inform her that they've been set free. The sight of what he is pointing to horrifies Hepzibah, who rushes inside the room to see what he has found. Unlike what she had expected, the judge's corpse isn't propped up on his chair, as she had assumed. Hepzibah gathers her cloak and pocketbook and flees into the night as Clifford tells his sister that they must leave. Hepzibah is on the verge of a nervous breakdown, but Clifford is elated and exhilarated by the prospect of freedom. Clifford chats with a man on the train about the amazing creation of the railroad as the two board the train. In the end, he tells the man that it's fine if the seven gabled house is pulled down since he has a plan for a nomadic future. Hepzibah and Clifford get out at the next stop when the elderly man he is conversing with becomes uneasy. There's no sign of the judge's corpse back at the seven gabled mansion. Awakening him in this way makes it seem like the speaker is simply talking to someone who has fallen asleep. Narrator points out that judge is missing key dinners and meetings. Colonel Pinch inspectors begin to march across the room, and each one stops in front of Colonel Pynchon's painting and peers around it, as if looking for something. As dawn breaks the next day, the judge, still dead in his chair, is seen walking down the street outside his house as usual. He knocks on the shop door, but Holgrave tells him that no one is there from his window. Hepzibah and Clifford are no longer in the shop, a neighbor tells a customer. Workers from the previous chapter, who bought a gingerbread man from the store, laugh at the boy's presumption that the business would fail. The store is now shuttered. Even though Phoebe is overjoyed to be returning home, the young kid warns her that something sinister is waiting for her inside. Hepzibah scares Phoebe off, so she enters the house. Even though Holgrave refuses to allow Phoebe to glance into the parlor, he appears to be overjoyed as if something fantastic had just occurred. When he shows Phoebe a new daguerreotype of the judge, she is shocked. To avoid implicating Clifford and Hepzibah, he tells her he has not called the police and expects they will soon return. Phenomenal. Phoebe is astonished and wants to call the police right once. Holgrave on the other hand, who has gone completely bonkers, is overjoyed and declares his undying love for her. Although Phoebe initially rebuffs Holgrave, she eventually succumbs to his pressure and tells him she loves him as well. Clifford and Hepzibah had just returned home at that point. Hepzibah breaks down in tears when she sees Holgrave and Phoebe. The news of the judge's death is made public, although the village is only mildly shocked by it. A similarity in his death to that of Uncle Jaffrey Pynchon has prompted others to doubt the facts surrounding his death. Clifford Pynchon was not the assassin of Jaffrey Pynchon, but rather the judge who died as a result of shock after seeing his nephew snooping through his uncle's files. It wasn't until he went through all the papers and destroyed Jaffrey Pynchon's will that he realized he needed help. This led him to organize all evidence to point to Clifford's identity. S. After the judge's death, his son unexpectedly passed away, and Clifford received all of his father's possessions. Hepzibah, Phoebe, and Holgrave follow Clifford to the judge's opulent townhouse. As a revolutionary and anti-wealth advocate, Holgrave is apprehensive at first about moving into the new house, but he soon begins to change his mind, which Phoebe teases him about. Holgrave accidentally knocks the old colonel's portrait to the floor, revealing a secret paper that turns out to be the deed for the enormous parcel of main property. Hepzibah deduces that Clifford found the parchment, became confused, and then reported it to the judge, who mistook it for evidence of their uncle's whereabouts. As a descendant of Matthew Mall's son, Holgrave was aware of the concealed compartment on the image because he is a mall. According to Phoebe, Uncle Venner is welcome to use the family's free cottage on their land. He is awed by the fact that they would want him to live with him, and this makes him happy. For her most loyal customer, Hepzibah offers the small boy who bought the gingerbread some money. On this night, 
Uncle Renair claims to hear the harpsichord music of Alice Pynchon as he goes by the Seven Gables residence. Pynchon's present occupant in the Seven Gables mansion is an elderly woman named Hepzibah. Hepzibah is a sweet, shy woman with a constant scowl caused by her nearsightedness. Hepzibah was formerly a wealthy lady of the town, but now she is broke. In spite of her shame and embarrassment, she has no choice but to create a shop in her house to earn a living. It's hard to tell which of her neighbors is rooting for her success and which of them are rooting against it. The visitors that enter Hepzibah's shop are treated with kindness, despite the fact that they are often frightened by her looks. Her brother, Clifford, is imprisoned for several years and refuses to even look at her when he returns. Despite this, she is devoted to his care and well-being. They have restored part of their sibling connection by the end of the novel, and Hepzibah's upturn in fortunes acts as a well-deserved redemption for Clifford. One of the genuine owners of the mansion with seven gables is Clifford Pynchon. After being wrongly accused by his cousin, Judge Pynchon of killing their uncle, Clifford has spent many years in prison. As a result of his time in prison, Clifford appears to be mentally ill. His sobbing and incompetence are frequent occurrences in his life. When the judge asks for him, he is nervous and frightened and refuses to see him, even though he doesn't know why he feels this way. When Hepzibah gives Phoebe the portrait of Clifford, she discovers that the once beautiful and honorable young man has been ravaged by the mental and emotional toll of serving time in prison for a crime he did not commit. In time, Clifford heals enough to reunite with Hepzibah and transfer the family into the judge's estate following the death of his cousin. Phoebe Pynchon, a Pynchon relative who visits the family. Phoebe is a breath of fresh air in the house because of her sunny disposition and contagious energy. After refurbishing her own room, she went on to brighten the garden and the shop. Despite her sunny disposition, Phoebe is a moral and wise person. She's typically the house's sanity check, displaying both her strength and her softer side. This initial assumption by Holgrave is forced to be reconsidered later on when it becomes clear to him that he cannot read her like a book. Clifford's strange mental state in the house's mysteries don't interest Phoebe, who is a responsible person. She's a lot of fun, but she's not a slut. When Holgrave asks her to marry him, she rejects him out of hand, insisting that the police be contacted first. Rather than the other way around, she makes him change for her. The adversary of the novel is Judge Pynchon. A living example of his ancestor, the colonel's harshness and ruthlessness, may be found in Judge. He is the rightful descendant of Pynchon's vicious lineage. Despite his affable demeanor, the judge harbors a dark secret beneath the surface, and he wears a false smile to try to fool those around him. The judge has been blaming Clifford for the death of their uncle for many years and appears to be convinced that his cousin really did kill their uncle. The judge's ties to the bad man's heritage are severed in the same way that his uncle's were severed when he was killed by accident. Holgrave, the only inhabitant of the home of Seven Gables. He's a daguerreotypist in his early twenties who sees himself as a revolutionary and an enemy of wealth and authority. However, Hepzibah considers Holgrave's ideals and friends to be unsavory. As the narrative progresses, Holgrave's thoughts become more youthful, vibrant, and full of life than those of the mansion and its inhabitants. As a result, he serves as a sort of antithesis to the Seven Gabled Mansion. In the end, Holgrave's ancestry is traced down to Matthew Mall himself. When Holgrave accidentally hypnotizes Phoebe by accident, he has to persuade himself out of exploiting her powers for his own purposes. As a result, he removes some of the family's negative connotations from Alice Pynchon's death. Once he's engaged to Phoebe, he abandons many of his revolutionary principles. Nathaniel Hawthorne, 1804-1864, was one of the greatest American novelists of the 19th century. The Scarlet Letter. The House of Seven Gables, and Twice Told Tales are only a few examples of his short stories and novels. His works are regarded as some of the most significant in early American history. His grandfather was a key figure in the Salem Witch Trials, and after graduating from Bowdoin College in Maine, he decided to separate himself from his ancestors by changing the spelling of his name from Hawthorne to Hawthorne. Once in Salem, he worked at a customs office for a while. In 1838, he met and fell in love with Sophia Peabody. For financial reasons, he moved into a transcendentalist utopian society rather than because he agreed with their philosophy. For his novel, The Blythdale Romance, he drew on his experiences there. In 1842, he married Sophia. A long and happy marriage was the result of their union. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Ellery Channing, Herman Melville, who dedicated Moby Dick to him, and Henry David Thoreau were all friends of his during his lifetime. 
A fervent supporter of President Franklin Pierce from the beginning of his time with him was another notable fact about him. In his biography of Pierce, Hawthorne did not include anything nasty. Also, he had a chance encounter with Abraham Lincoln. He died in 1864, leaving Sophia and their three children to mourn him. Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. and Henry Longfellow both served as Paul Burrs during his funeral. Authors Ridge is where he is buried in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord, Massachusetts. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.